I'd like to talk to you a bit today about why we made the pie, why we think computing is a critical thing to learn and coding, and uh, also how we got here in the UK. Here's Ada Lovelace, um, 170 years ago. We've always been really, really good at computing in the UK. And we've got this fantastic legacy. Uh, I'm not going to say she was the first ever programmer, because uh, I'll start a flame war. But we certainly do have this legacy. And about 30 years ago, um, we were sort of programming on machines and coming up with stuff like this. And people will say, well, what's the difference between coding and programming? And, and to me, as an ex-teacher, there, there really isn't a difference. There's a program there that will flash an LED. There's a little piece of code there that will give you infinite lives in Manic Minor, if any of you go back that far. Um, and so this is 1982. This is probably me in front of a TV until your mum kicked you off because she wanted to watch That's Life. This is what you did. And it was a really, really normal thing to do. You got fantastically rich manuals with these computers. There was no patronizing. They were very, very detailed. And they taught you how to code. And then we got to the end of the century. And people were a bit gloomy. And the curriculum changed. And they put the C into IT and made this thing called ICT. And um, depends on who you speak to. They will tell you they were quite dark days for the last 14 or 15 years. And we're about to change again. The curriculum is about to change. And it probably started here with Eric Schmidt. He the, was then the chairman of Google. And uh, he was giving a lecture about, to a TV audience. And he, he did these three little, uh, three little sentences they were really almost throw away. And they said, well, you're throwing away your computer, computing heritage in the UK. And somebody listened. And Mr. Go thought, well, he might have a point here. Computing might be really interesting. The ICT we need to do. But the computing stuff is very, very important. We'd beaten him to it. Lots of people have, for, for years and years before that had been doing fantastic stuff, computing at school, Royal Society, BCS. Um, so Go might have stole the funder, but we'd already been thinking about it. And people started to say, well, it's a bit pants, isn't it, this ICT thing? And if it is pants, how are we going to fix it? Um, how are we going to fix it? Well, there's a few things you could do. And um, one thing that is going to happen is the curriculum name will change. And um, the content will change, so it's going to change to computing. What I want to do, though, is something else. And I want to move away from this paradigm where we have these lockdown boxes, these slabs of aluminum and glass, tablets, smartphones, laptops. Um, they're great. They're like a snow dome. You can shake them, have fun with them, um, have a little play with them, pass them on. But when you want to create your own aquarium or do something, they are not that useful. So we invented the Raspberry Pi. It's a tiny little credit card sized computer. Cost 30 pounds, and we made it to get young people into programming because we think it's very important. And it unlocks this paradigm. It jumps outside that box. It lets you fiddle about and play. It lets you experiment without fear of messing things up. And we think it gives you uh, a toolkit for experimentation, a toolkit for thinking. So I, I really don't want to focus on coding. I want to focus more on computational thinking, how to think, and the fact that by doing this, I do actually become a better thinker, and that goes right across the curriculum. So when you do this, magical things happen. And um, when you give people these tools, people send marshmallows into space. And this is a 13-year-old who sent marshmallows into space with a Raspberry Pi. He's got a grape as a control because he wanted to see how they expanded. So this is science already, and he had a data logger, and he drew graphs. And people start to get quite creative. Um, the Aldershot Scouts group, they're coding at the top. They're learning to program. But actually, what they're doing is quite creative as well. They're building a Martian landscape. And they are going to get a little rover and sort of move that around the landscape and program it to avoid obstacles and so on. So there is this cr cross-curricular thing. It isn't a geeky um, thing computing, or certainly shouldn't be. And we want to break out of that paradigm. This is two 17-year-olds, I think. They've made a real fantastic piece of scientific kit. Um, again, if I bought this in a science, um, for a science department, this would cost thousands. It measures everything from temperature to pressure to carbon monoxide. And it sends it all back to a central server. So you can actually do some serious stuff. And we've got a nice little hook. We've got Minecraft, uh, a particular version for the Raspberry Pi. And the very cool thing about this version is that I can program it. And I can program it in Python or Scratch. And then uh, I can actually create things. So why dig when you can code is the hook there for a lot of people. And we can make things happen in the real world from that as well. 
people are starting to get very creative. Once you show them how to code, once you show them how to control a computer, we find art and music and stuff like this coming in. This is a, an installation from the Docklands. It's called Voyager. And if you tweet it, you can get all of the colors in those Raspberry Pi controlled um, boats to sort of um, change and sweep. Um, this little plant feeder. This is an artist called Rachel Rains who we're working with at the moment. And she's doing fantastic things with computing with the Pi. Um, these little sensors, they're not LEDs, they're not actually LCDs, they're motor controlled inside and it will feed your plants and it will report back to you. Um, and then we get into things like music and, and what you start to find is some fantastically creative, um, engaging lessons. And this is a lesson based on a thing called Sonic Pi we're working on at the moment with teachers and PhD students. And what you'll actually find is that the kids don't want to leave that lesson, they want to stay at break, they're making their own synthesizer um, by programming. Which leads on to a musical analogy. We don't want to make an army of coders. You don't teach music to make an army of concert pianists. What we want to do is expose people to these ideas to give them a chance to find out if they like computing or not and to actually let them develop their own interests. At the moment, we um, don't do that. So we came up with this little device, which we hope is part of the solution. It's obviously not the whole solution, but we do want to expose more children to coding and programming because it's good for your brain, it helps you think computationally. And my son said to me the other day, he said, Daddy, um, I've learned how to think about thinking. He was using Scratch and making a game. And that was metacognition through play. And I think I've run out of time. Thank you. Thank you.